and uh, and the second one was uh, concave concave mirror and third one is convex. So I mean, uh, you can call all of them as a spherical mirror. Uh, I told you, even if like uh, the plane mirror doesn't have a chord, you can consider that hey, my sphere is an infinite radius, and the small section of infinite radius is like a like a plane. Okay, so uh, you have a three mirrors, and I represent like in a diagram like this. It's a plane mirror that every day you will stand in front of plane mirror. I don't know if about yourself, but myself, I want to uh, stand with a plane mirror. Uh, plane mirror. One side of the mirror is like a shiny. It's a back of mirror. Whenever light falls on the shiny surface, okay, uh, like a, it reflects and then it forms a virtual image. Okay, uh, it's a plane mirror. This side it looks like that. And the uh, concave mirror, um, so concave mirror, I mean the shape looks like this, okay. Um, so you have a chord in, okay. So you have a shiny part over here, and okay, it's a very shiny part of the mirror, like shiny, I mean, it's a mirror. And uh, it is a concave mirror, concave mirror, okay. So you have a cave. Like, yeah, if you see like uh, from the side, the design part, so you have a cave-like structure, okay? Some people say cave in, just for the uh, simplicity. Cave in, you have a cave inside, and you have a convex, the shape of the convex, I mean like the uh, opposite to the concave, so basically you have a sine part, okay? So, um, <coughs> Back of the mirror, okay. This is the context. Context. Okay. So these are three kind of mirrors. Uh, so as I told you that you know you can call all of them as a spherical mirror because even if the plane mirror you have like a like a straight, you can consider a sphere of an infinite radius and a small section of infinite radius is plane. Okay. So, um, so these mirrors, I mean, light cannot pass through it. Okay, the mirror makes an image by reflection of light. So, whenever light falls on the light falls on the this is a shiny part. Let's say I have a point object. The object can be like a, a so object. Let's say uh, I talked about the plane mirror first. So if you place it in front of this one, so basically light from this one falls on this one. So let me uh, talk about this one. Whenever you give the light straight, you have to reflect back straight. So basically it comes like this. And uh, this one, so you make sure that your angle of intersection is equal to angle of reflection. You can draw like many, but after the reflection, it wants to go this way. These two rays may never meet each other. Similarly, can consider like the other. So my drawing is not that good. So basically, after the reflection, so this ray of light, they never meet each other. So, uh, but in the optics, you can find a image which can by extrapolation. If you do the extrapolation, okay. So this ray appears to come from this one. This is the point where uh, my drawing is not that good. I think I'm sorry for that. Okay, let me check over here. This is the image location. You have an image. Image. Okay. So you have one there, you have an image. Whenever you make like an image uh, over here, uh, whenever you try to find the image over here, you need to do extrapolation, okay? So this is a real image, it's a virtual image, okay? The image formed by a plane mirror is virtual, and uh, for the plane mirror, this is the object distance, T, and this is image distance over here, you can call I or Q, it's up to you. You can call I, okay? 
So for the same year, E equal to I. Right? This is what we got. Okay? Whenever you stand in front of plane mirror, you will see your image behind the mirror, but at the same distance you stand in front of plane mirror. So, if we talk about a magnification, the magnification for plane mirror is one. Because the size of image is gonna be the same as the size of object. You will see yourself, the image you will see in front of, I mean, in, in the plane mirror is like the same as your, your size. Okay? But, if you talk about concave and convex mirror, the size will be different. Either you see bigger or sometimes you see small. Okay? So this one's tricky. The concave mirror is more tricky. Um, but convex mirror, I can tell you that if you talk about this, you know, principal axis, this is the principal axis I can draw over here. Principal axis or mirror axis. The line that pass through the center of the mirror and center of the sphere. Okay, so uh, you have a focus somewhere here because the focus is virtual focus. You can have any focus over here, so uh, you can consider this a focus. Uh, I just go like this. Okay, so again, you can consider uh, an object any distance from the mirror. You have object. Okay. So you have like a couple of ray of light. I told you the first one easy to remember is that it's hitting at the center of the mirror. Okay? Whenever you hit at the center of the mirror, this is easy to remember. Like this. Now this angle, whenever you reflect, it's gonna be like the same angle over here. Okay? Whenever you hit. This is easy to remember. Second one is the light that is at this form over here. So basically, whenever you hit over here, parallel the principal axis, parallel the principal axis, they are parallel. If you have a ray of light that is parallel the principal axis, it passes through the focus. But focus is on the other side, right? There is no way that light can penetrate through the mirror. So, for that, what we have to do? After the reflection, it appears to come from the, right? This is what we know. So, after the reflection from the mirror, one is going down and another is going up. There's no way that they're going to beat each other. The way that to find the image position is that, you do extrapolation. So after the extrapolation, they meet over here. This is the location for the okay. You have object, you have image, you can see the object is bigger, the image is smaller. If you change the location of an image, you might see bigger also. But it's not exactly similar to this one that in the pen mirror, no matter where you place the object, you will have the same size of the image. Okay? So this is about the convex, and as you know that, you use the extrapolation to find the image position. So this is also a virtual equation, okay? So let me go back to the convex, concave. The concave is a little bit tricky. Uh, it depends on where you place an object. So uh, I'm gonna revise, you know, like uh, before I start the new topic today. So, uh, We have a concave mirror. The mirror axis, the principal axis. Principal axis. And you have a somewhere focus. You know, like you can find some focus over here, and okay, focus. And if your object is inside a focus, you find a part of the mirror. You place an object inside the focus, you place it over here. Then again, draw the ray diagram, okay? So this is the object.
So as I told you, the first one is that draw a line that is the center, this is a first ring you have to consider. It's an angle. The angle of insertion will be equal to angle of reflection. Similarly, the second one is going to be principle, kind of a principle like this. If you have a ray of light that is kind of a principle like this, that pass through the focus, right? So uh, whenever you draw the, just pass through the focus. So basically, ray of light, after the passing through this, you know, like a, a reflection from the mirror, they never meet each other, so if you want to find a point where they meet each other, you need to do extrapolation and uh, just do the extrapolation. This is the place where you have an image. So this is the virtual image, okay? And you can see that the image is bigger than object, okay? So concave mirror, if you are inside the focus of the mirror, you will see like a bigger. Okay, that's the reason I told you, make up mirror like we use, uh, like a, in a daily life, you know, it has like a design in such a way that you are always, your face is always inside the focus. So that whenever you see, like you use a mirror, so I see like that, you will see the image, and my case is gonna be bigger, because the image is bigger. Okay, so the second case over here, that if you have the same mirror, okay, uh, and uh, again, I'm gonna place an object, but at this time, the print of axis, axis, okay, and you have an image, uh, sorry, focus. So you have like a air focus over here. And you place an object outside the focus. So uh, again, uh, so you have like a couple of ray of light, you know, I told you the first one is that, uh, you know, uh, the heating, So one is that is you know hitting at the center, okay. So you're gonna hit at the center. So I mean you try to make a straight line so that this angle can come to the reflection. Okay. Uh, I mean my drawing is not that good. Sorry for that. Yeah. So basically after the reflection, this angle should be the single. Second one is the ray of light that is parallel to the principal axis. Again, draw a line parallel to the principal axis and it will pass through the focus. Okay, whenever it passes through the focus, it will pass through the focus. So after the reflection, these two ray of light, they meet at this point over here. This is the image. So remember that, so whenever you are outside the focus, the ray of light, after the reflection from the mirror, they meet each other without extrapolation. So this is the real image. Okay, so this is like overview of what we have gone through in the last couple of lectures. Uh, this is very confusing. And our exam is going to be very soon. So I mean, I don't want like you guys get confused. So try to like be organized. Uh, we have a clear picture, okay? And uh, one thing I want to show you over here, uh, we have gone through like everything. So I have like some quiz over here for you guys, okay? Uh, quiz means that we just practice together. Uh, it's not like something that you have to uh, do by yourself. So you have a three type of mirror over here. There are three kind of mirrors over here. Plane mirror, and concave mirror, and convex mirror. And I place an object, okay? So, uh, for the plane mirror anywhere, like in front of mirror, or concave mirror, 
One case is like inside the focus, another one is outside the focus. And for the convex, I can place any, any point. Now, based on this one, I need to find the location of image, type of image, orientation, the sign, because like if you have a virtual focus, I have a negative sign, right? That will be gone. So uh, the radius of curvature, the R, I value, the, the sign for I, because I is the image position. If it is a virtual, it's going to be negative, and magnification N. Okay? So let's do the, uh, the practice for this one. It's going to be really uh, interesting. So you have a plane mirror. This is already I gave you. You place an object anywhere according to this one. So, uh, uh, so uh, you can place. So if you place in a plane mirror, like a, a, and then you have an object anywhere. Now, let's figure out where is going to be the image position. So image position means like a, you can have like on the same side or on the opposite side. Okay, so I think I have some answer for you. So over here, in the opposite side of the mirror, but I already showed you the image is going to be on the opposite side. Okay, and type. Is it real or virtual? So according to that, you no, know, what we have that is gonna be virtual. Right? What about orientation? If we stand off in front of plane mirror, you have the image gonna be also off. That means your image gonna be non inverted, right? So the orientation gonna be non inverted. This is a clear picture that how image found in a plane mirror. Okay? What about focus? And focus is going to be really uh, not relevant because if you consider that the image, sorry, the plane mirror is like a small section of, small section of infinitely large sphere. I told you, right? I mean, we talked about that. Let's talk about this one. Circle, a sphere, a bigger radius. If you keep on going higher, small section will be the plane mirror, right? So if you consider from center to center distance, it's going to be really large. I call it infinite. Right? So if you remember the relation between focus and radius of curvature, it was like this. If your radius of curvature is very large, your focus is going to be also large, infinite. You can write down infinite, or like, or you can just say not actually. Because you know, even if I put infinite, I cannot deal with, you know, like, uh, I cannot use that equation to solve the finding the image position. Okay, so you can write that infinite. So similarly, I mean, the radius of curvature is very large. What was sign for image? The image is going to be virtual, so anything in the virtual in the office, we're going to use the negative sign. That's a negative over there. Okay? What about magnification? Magnification is going to be positive. This one I want to point out, you know, uh, because this is going to be in your true and false question. So, why magnification is positive for the a plane mirror or virtual image in, in general. So if you have, I mean, uh, I can go with the, you know, like a formula. The magnification has a true formula, okay? So n is, what is absolute value? S prime over n. Okay, so that was the one formula, right? And then there is the formula, n is minus i over There are two formulas, right? I mean, if, if you don't believe me, I can show you. Um, <coughs> the, the magnification has a two formula. One is S prime over H and minus I over P. Okay? So, uh, I'm talking about the plane mirror. 
what will be m value is positive or negative for the pair mirror okay so over here i can definitely tell that the object height so this is image height and object height they're going to be same the magnification value is one for the pair mirror magnitude is one but it doesn't mean that it will be one or negative one because you are talking about the actual value right so how i figure out the this you know uh, whether it's positive one or negative one this is from here so if you go over here minus what do you think the m value will be positive or negative <coughs> hmm? positive. why negative one so you have i which is the image distance okay the image is virtual image if something is virtual i have to take negative whatever the number we have that will be negative and you repeat so negative negative is going to be positive so if you place the like a value over here whatever the number you get the m value will be always Okay, so I think I should have a positive over here. So in, in the true and false question, hey, the, the M value, the magnification for a plane mirror is positive. That will be interesting. Okay, so uh, I gave a total information on image formation, image type for the plane mirror. Let's practice for the concave, okay? So I don't want to spend too much time on this one. Um, you can figure out easily. Suppose you have two cases for the concave mirror. One is inside the focus and outside the focus. Let's talk about the first one, okay? If you are inside the focus, definitely you have a virtual image and it's going to be on the opposite side of the object. So let's say, so if you have an object inside the focus, the location is going to be on the opposite side of the mirror. Whatever type, this is virtual, this should be virtual. Whatever orientation, this is off, your image is going to be also off. See, not in front. Whatever focus, For a for a concave, a concave mirror, it's a rear focus or a virtual focus. Rear, so that means it should be positive. What about radius of curvature? I here is a, I mean over here. The radius of curvature has a direct relation between radius of curvature and r. So if it's a it's a real, it's going to be as a real, it means you have a both positive, okay? What about image? It's a bottom image, it's going to be negative, okay? And I already showed you how to find the sign of the N. If you have a virtual, it's going to be negative, negative, it will be positive. So if this is a virtual image, it's going to be positive, right? So basically, you know, like you just try to, you know, like play with this one, you know, there are like others, like a two remaining. So I have all the answer in that slide. I mean, if I, I mean, showed you all of them, you know, it looked like this. So just play with this one, practice yourself. Because so the object is very confusing, okay? Any question about this one? All right, so this is a revision of the whatever we wrote so far, okay? So if you don't have any question, let me go to the topic for today. Um, so it's uh, today we're gonna talk about the lens, okay? Um, so um, so lens, uh, this is a mirror. We have two kind of lens, I will talk about that now.
Okay, so there are two kind of lens. Uh, one is converting lens and diverting one. Uh, lens is like a, is a transparent. Okay, uh, so um, so light is passing through the lens mirror, and mirror is not transparent. So lens is like a you know, like a, you have a glass, the light passes. Okay, so this is a little bit different. So uh, I will revise this one you know, before I start. Uh, when you were the light heat on the surface. Let's say you have the interface between between you have air and you have water. You have two mediums, okay? And definitely uh, you have uh, like a surface, water surface. And the light, when you put each feet on the surface, your light is hitting on the surface. Let's say you have a normal to the surface. Definitely, some part of the light will be reflected, right? Because you know, uh, if you see, you know, like a sunlight is falling on the uh, uh, water surface, some light will be reflected. You will see, like in the sun, okay, the light is reflected. It's a reflection of light, but some part of the light will be passed through. Maximum light, light, you know, in the water. It passed through it. So whenever it bends, it will bend towards the normal. Okay? So this is called reflection of light, this is called refraction of light that we draw. And uh, the bending, <coughs> the bending can happen either towards the normal or away from the normal. Depending on from where to where you are going. If you talk about an air and water, the water is denser compared to air. Okay? If you have a water is a denser, you have a less denser, we call it rear. Okay? Basically, the refractive index of the medium matters a lot, whether it bends in which direction. Okay? So, so I mean, just remember that denser means that, you know, if you have, you know, two, twelve, I think I mentioned this one already. Uh, so if you have a box of equal volume, you have equal volume, and you place air over here, so here you fill with the air, and you fill with the, the same container of equal volume, you have a uh, what is called uh, water. You can easily imagine that water is heavier compared to the air. So density is, I just write a rho, is given by mass divided by volume. So given the volume, same for both of them, if you have a higher mass, then you have a density is higher. Okay? We call this denser. And we call it less tension in the physics we call rear medium, which means that less tension. Okay? So over here, whenever light is going from rear to denser medium, then your light bends towards the normal. So your light is supposed to go straight path, it just comes this way, not go this way. Okay? Similarly, I will just like rewrite this one. Rewrite. So you have a glass, okay? You have a glass surface. And you have an air, okay? So you have an air. The interface between the glass and air, okay? Definitely glass is denser. And you have a rear. So if the light is going from glass, okay? The opposite thing happens. Let's say, A normal is supposed to go a straight path. Okay. Now it will bend this way. Okay. So this is the light is going from the denser to rear medium. Okay. Uh, this is you know like the uh, very interesting and I also talked about in a total internal reflection, right? Uh, in the last couple of lectures people, okay. Anyway, 
Why I'm talking about this one? Because whenever I talk about lens, lens is transparent. Okay? So whenever an uh, image is formed, so image is formed by the phenomenon is called refraction of light. Okay? Okay? So refraction of light takes place whenever light goes or pass through the lens. Okay? So we talk about two kinds of lens over here. So let me go one by one. One is called converging lens, and the one is diverging lens. Okay, uh, there are two kinds of lens. Uh, I'm going to go uh, one by one. So let's talk about converging lens and diverging lens. <coughs> one is converging lens. Okay, and second one is diverging lens. So here we talk about thin lens, you know, uh, we are not talking about the thickness of the, uh, the lens, uh, we are talking about a very thin lens, okay. So the converging lens, you know, typically the shape looks like this, over here, okay. The thickness of this, you know, uh, this, you know, the lens is very narrow, okay. So you have The line passing through the center of the lens we call principal axis or lens axis, the similar to the mirror. Okay. It's called converging lens, this the drawing for the converging lens. Converging lens. We call this one converging because Whenever ray of light that is parallel to the principal axis pass through this one, this is like made out of plastic or glass. They basically form together and meet at a point. Okay, they are converting after the passing through the lens. They come together. Onboard means they come together. And this point is called focus F. Okay, so this is the similar to the what we have you know, um, learned in the mirror where a ray of light after the reflection from the mirror surface they meet at a point. That point is called focus. But here the light can pass through the Lens because lens is transparent, so basically, ray of light after the passing through the mirror or so lens over here they converge, and we call it converging. And this point where they meet each other is called focus. Okay, and you can easily imagine that what kind of focus it is real or virtual, real because you don't have to do any extrapolation. Okay, so real focus for the converging. Okay, so uh, let me go further. The other kind of you know lens is diverging. Let me represent over here. The shape looks like this. So diverging. Diverging lens, okay. Um, so you have a principal axis, okay. Now, um, again, this is a principal axis, a principal axis, principal axis, the ray of light parallel to the principal axis. This is like uh, over here, they will diverge. One is going off, one is going down, but they appear to meet at a point after the extrapolate. 
and try to that that okay? Uh, this point is called focus. I could have used a different color so that it would be better. Uh, so basically we apply um, the divert like this, the divert like that. That drawing that is um, sorry about that. Um, so uh, for here, this is the focus. Okay. That's the reason like I reapply after passing through the focus, the divert we call diverging lens. Okay. Um, one important point over here, and you might have the picture over here, diverging lens. So uh, one very important point, and you have to understand uh, because sometimes you know you 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 memorize something, and you know you never know. I mean, what is happening? Okay, the physics is very important that you understand it. Okay. Okay. You have a converging lens. You have a diverging lens. Uh, there are two kind of lens, and by name you can. Understand that the rear flight after the passing through the converging lens, they come together, means converge together. The rear flight after passing through the diverging lens, they diverge, and uh, that's the name we call diverging lens. But you can still find the point where they come from by extrapolation. This is called focus. Okay, a couple of things you know, I want you to. Focus on here. Let's assume that this material is made out of plastic, like some kind of plastic, transparent plastic. And this also made out of the same material. Okay. Light can pass through both of the object, both of the lens. Even then, light is converging over here, and light is diverging over here after it passed through the lens. Why it is happening like that? Why light is you know, diverging over here, converging over here, light is converging over here? Is there any way we can explain with the physics knowledge you have learned so far? And it's like uh, sometimes you, you think yourself, you know, what is happening? You, you have the same material, you have a glass, let's say you have a made out of the same glass. Why light is in converting in one case? And why is like a light is diverting in the other shape? Anyone have an idea? How we can explain? That's the correct answer. Um, we can use the, this principle, whether light is going from rear or denser medium, and whether it's based towards or away from the normal. What is more, more important over here is that how the light is hitting on the surface. The curvature matters a lot over here, so let me go one by one. So why light is converging over here, so uh, I can show you over here, I mean it's a very easy um, to explain. So let's say I have only small section of, and I can draw this one, so like I can make it bigger, small section of this one, um, the top section of this uh, converting lens. Okay, so this, Small section, how light is behaving, we can easily figure out. So, over here, this material is made out of either plastic or glass. Okay? So, over here, you have plastic or glass. It's like, let's say, uh, plastic, let's say, transparent plastic, okay? So, outside this one, you have air. Whenever, like, a light goes out of this one, you have air. 
And as I told you that, whenever light goes from here to there, let's say you are heating like this, because you are passing the light, you are passing the light parallel to the principal axis. I just want to figure out what is happening in this region. Small section over here. Why is it bending like that? Why is it going up? Okay. So now, if you have a two different mediums, the light is going from air to plastic. If you consider this interface, plastic versus air, which one is heavier? Plastic. You are going from rear to denser medium. Right? You are going because the air is in the lighter compared to plastic. Okay. Now, if you pass or if you go from rear to denture, so you have an like you have a rear to denture, you bend towards the normal, so you need to figure out the normal, but because of this curvature, because this curvature is not like you know like a flat piece, you know, like so normal is gonna be perpendicular to this one. So basically normal is like this. So just draw the normal like that. Is that it? What do you think? Normal is like that. Because you have like a surface with a field then like this. No, no, no. Definitely, the ray of light is supposed to travel in a straight path like this. If you are going straight, right? It's a normal. It's a normal. And since you are going from rear to denser medium, you want to bend towards the normal. This is a normal. Okay. You want to bend. You bend this direction. You are not going this way. Right? Do you do that? Now, you heat on the other side of the lens, other surface. If you consider this. Interface, this is a denser, this is a rare. Okay? You have a rare. If you go from denser to rare medium, if you go to denser to rare medium, you want to go away from the normal. So basically, this original path is like that. You want to move away from the normal. So again, draw the normal. So normal, whenever you have this kind of surface, you're gonna have it. Normal, okay. You're supposed to go straight path because this is the straight path I can see, right? Now, according to this one, you don't want to bend this direction, you want to bend, right? So basically, you are parallel, but you are bending down. That is exactly what is happening over here. You are parallel and you are bending down. You can do the same physics over here. If you alter this one, it will bend off so that they meet each other over here. Okay? So this is nothing but just you know how the light behaves whenever it goes from rear to denser medium or denser to rare. Okay? Uh, so that's the reason that curvature or like a shape matters a lot. So for the converging, the rear light after passing through the lens, they're gonna meet each other and uh, form the focus, that is the real focus. Any questions so far? Similarly, you can do the same math over here. I mean, uh, because the curvature is like this, you whenever you have like a, a Whenever you have a normal, it's gonna be normal like this, okay? Uh, so you can do the same mathematics, you know. It's very important that you have a normal like this, you know, so you are sort of like that. Okay. Normal is like that. Okay? So basically you can do the same thing over here. Okay, <coughs> okay uh, a couple of things I want to uh, figure uh, tell you about here. Um, I already showed you how the light is behaving over here. 
Now, like this, I mean, and so this lens is transparent. So uh, whenever you have ray of light passing through this one, you have one focus. They meet each other and they meet over here. But lens is transparent, you can send the light from here, from the other side of this one. They come and you meet at a point. You have another focus. Okay? So for a lens, you have a two focus in either side. Because light can be passed through any direction. It's transparent. It's not like a mirror that the light cannot pass through the mirror. Lens is transparent. If you pass the light from this side, they meet over here. This is one focus. If you pass the light from this side, you have another focus. Okay? You can call F1 or F2, depending on like how you define, you can call F1 or F2. But if your lens is symmetric, if your lens is symmetric, F1 is equal to F2. Okay? The symmetry, symmetric lens, lens, you have the same value of F1 equal to F2. The smooth focus are equal. Okay. Similarly, if you pass a light on this direction, my my device like a little bit of like a mess. Okay, please. I just want to show you over here. After the reflection. They meet over here. This is the focus. You can call it F1, F2. So uh, the symmetry means, you know, don't, don't uh, like uh, be confused. The symmetry means at this time we are talking about, you know, lens like that. If you divide this one in equal half, left side part is equal to the right side part. Okay, so basically you can find the point where you can exactly call this lens the two parts. Okay. Similar this one. Okay. And you might ask me a question. Do we have like asymmetric lens? Yes, we do. Uh, some of the you know, like uh, I mean people you know they have not like a symmetry. You know, like you have to have like a, some correction. So if you go to like a uh, I mean like a doctor, eye specialist, you know, sometimes they give you like, you know, like asymmetric lens because your vision is literally tilted somehow, okay? So to make a correction for that, then they have to give you the asymmetric lens, okay? But here, we want to make like everything simple. Our lens is in a symmetric over here. That is left hand side is going to be the right hand side part of that lens. And uh, our bodies are symmetric, you know, like if you, like you know, if you consider a line passing through the center of our body, the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. Okay? So in the same way, we have considered that lens is symmetric over here, and we have considered this lens are very thin, okay? Okay, so this is about the uh, lens, uh, the type of lens, and how the um, lens like can have a two focus, and we call these two focus are equivalent. Okay, they have you know um, the same uh, behavior, <coughs> and I talk to you. I, I mentioned about the uh, how the diverging lens and the converging lens they have like a different behavior because of the shape. Now uh, the converging lens and diverging lens. I want to go a little bit further um, here. Um, let's talk about the converging and diverging lens one more time. So, uh, I want to connect this information with the lens and the mirror, okay? Uh, if you consider a mirror, do you remember that whenever I talk about the mirror, let's say you have a concave mirror, let's say, like this. We can consider that this mirror is, you know, like a 
second half, I mean small second half is okay. Okay, small that is fair, and then the radiation R. Right? I talk about that. And we call this a spherical mirror. Similarly, if you have a lens like this, we can consider that front and back part of this lens is a, is a part of the sphere. So you have this is the one like a convert thing. So you can find the front part over here, the back part of the small section. So you can find the front part is small section of sphere. Yeah. And this sphere has a radius of R1, let's say the front part, let's say R1. R1. Radius of curvature. Mm. Similarly, the back part of this lens is also Okay. You can consider that in this front part, you can consider a sphere. I call this R1 for the form part, the radius of R1. Similarly, the back portion of the lens is also a small portion of the sphere. And I'm going to have a radius that is R2. So basically, um, the, the thin lens can be considered that small portion of you know uh, the sphere and i want to like connect this one with the sphere because i want to know how far is the surface because like a, if you consider like a curvature then you need to consider the radius of the curvature okay and there is a curvature can be found from the sphere okay uh, so over here so r1 and r2 uh, it's like a the radius of curvature for the front surface and r2 is the radius of curvature for the um, back surface of the lens. All right, so this is about the uh, lens. Um, and uh, definitely, uh, similar to the mirror, uh, lens also form the image. And uh, I already talked about the real and virtual, uh, virtual focus for the converging and diverging. Uh, the converging lens has a, like a real focus because you can send the light from this direction and after the reflection from the after refraction from the lens they come together and they form a focus okay this is a real focus but here this is a virtual focus because the real light after the refraction through the lens diverging lens they diverge and then uh, we can find the point where they meet each other this is the uh, virtual focus. Okay. Um, so basically, uh, a converging lens has a real focus, and diverging lens has a virtual focus. 
Now, this is an important point. Uh, let me uh, talk about this one. Similar to mirror, lens also forms an image. And image is formed through the refraction of light, OK? And uh, it depends on where you place an object for the converging lens, OK? Uh, this converging lens is always pretty. So let's talk about that. How the image is formed whenever light passes through a converging lens. Okay. Um, so we need to draw the ray diagram again. You have a converging lens over here. Uh, it's a converging lens. You have a principal axis, and you have a focus. Okay, uh, on the either side, you have a focus on this side, and you say F. The other side, as we call it, then you have F. Okay. Now, if you place an object outside the focus, let's say you have an object outside the focus. Let's try to find the image for this one. Okay, uh, as I told you, and there are a couple of ray of light that is the pinpoint over here. The first one I want to uh, point out that if you hit on the center over here, this is the center one is always easy because you know um, in the mirrors I told you that you know whenever light hit on the center and the mirror is not transparent, it will reflect back in the same angle, right? But for the lens, it's transparent, so it will hit in the center. What if you pass through that? If you pass through the lens without deviation, okay? The center one is very special. Second one, I mean, my I mean, line doesn't look very great shape, you know, but please pay attention. Okay, this is the second one. Second one is parallel to the principal axis. Whenever you light, you have a parallel the principal axis, it will pass through the focus. It will pass through the focus. Please try to make it straight, okay? Uh, my, 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 my. So basically, the ray of light, after passing through the focus, they meet at a point. This is the image position. We can have another ray of light. If, if your ray of light that is parallel to the principal axis, it passes through the focus. If your ray of light that is in a parallel to the principal axis, sorry, pass through the focus on the one side, it will be the parallel. It's the opposite, okay? So basically you have three ray of light, you have an image formed this way. This is the right? This is how image is formed. Um, we already know how to you know, uh, draw the diagram. Um, so uh, the image is gonna be the property of image, image. Image like a property one is it is real image because you didn't do any extrapolation to find the image position that means it's a real image and second one is it is your like air is up when you bring image from is like air is down so it's a in body third one is 
it is on the opposite side because you have the object on the left hand side, you have image on the right hand side, you have the opposite side. So these are the image property from by a converging lens. If you have an object that is outside the focus. Okay, so um, so this is about the converging. Uh, let me finish the diverging. Uh, sorry, uh, another case also. So if you have a converging lens again, but you place the object that is inside the focus. Yeah, we have a little different story over here that. We have the focus over here. Let's say I do not have a focus on this one. Over here. The same converging lens, but you place an object over here, okay? I mean, you can put object like that. Or like for simplicity, I can make a little bit uh, bigger focus on this lens so that you know, I don't have enough space. Place an object over here, object. And definitely the first ray of light is passing through the center, which is the easiest one. It goes this way. It doesn't deviate at all. The second one is parallel to the principal axis, like that, okay, it will pass through the focus, it's focus over here, you can see that, I mean I couldn't make it better, but you can draw it better like that, how is that? If it passes through the focus, you know, like I mean, uh, you can pass through the focus, you know, like it appears to pass through the focus, you know, uh, you can make it like a little bit faster. And uh, it is hitting over here. It will be sad. This power one, you don't need to even like it. If you want to draw it, that is fine. So here, you can see that three ray of light after passing through the I will pass it to the uh, lens, they never seems to like a convert together, right? On the other side, one is going down, one is going straight, like a like a horizontal direction. So to find the point where they meet each other, so what you have to do? You have to do the extrapolation. Just do the extrapolation. I mean, if you do the extrapolation for this one, so I mean, you may have this one. And for the better picture, you know, please take a look on that, you know. This one is extrapolation. We have extrapolation for this one also. I mean, my drawing is not that skill. They make it like The point where the image is formed. You have object inside the focus and you have an image like that. The typical image properties are the image, you can see that image, definitely this is the virtual image because you have to do extrapolation. Right? Second one is, second one is, you have an object, non in, uh, like an off, your image is off, that means you're not inverted. And your object on the left hand side of the lens, your image on the different side is on the same side.
of the name. See? You have a two different scenario for an image formed by a converging lens if you have a different, like a location of object with respect to focus. Okay? If you are outside the focus, you have a real image and it's been modded and on the point side. But if you are inside the focus, you have a virtual image and not inverted on the same side of the focus. Okay, so, uh, so we're going to keep on talking about this one uh, for the other kind of you know, uh, lens that is the diagonal lens in the next lecture. Okay? Uh, I always the class today. Thanks, Dave. They both fall out.